This is Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell, and it's always a pleasure to be here. I put in the description of this project uh, what I hope to be using for colors and a little bit of what we're doing. So if you miss those colors, go back and look at that. Uh, we are going to try and have a little bit of fun. Tonight, I'm actually not painting a piece of furniture. I'm going to be working on this little crate. It's really unusual for me not to be doing furniture, but tonight I'm taking a little break from furniture. We're going to paint something a little smaller. And I'm excited to actually try out the Buffalo Check stencil tonight. The Dixie Bell just released not long ago, part of the Bells and Whistles uh, line. So I'm excited about that. So we're going to be layering some coastal, uh, nice casual colors, cool colors. And I'm excited about doing that. Uh, just to review real quick the colors, I have Vintage Duck Egg, Sea Glass, Lemonade, which I just used for the first time last night. I thought I'd pull that out again. And I have Fluff. So I'm going to be doing a multi-layer technique. Uh, I would kind of classify it as dry brush, meaning I'm not going to use a lot of water. I, 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 you, I want the texture of the wood to, to not be lost. And then my goal is not to cover up the whole, all the wood. So I really want it to look um, not necessarily chippy, but just aged. So this is about, probably about two feet wide. And this is the Buffalo Check stencil that I'm going to be using tonight. But we can't quite use it yet. I want to, I want to do this almost one of the last things. So if you're uh, looking forward to seeing that in use, hang on a little bit to the end. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go with Vintage Duck Egg. And we're just gonna build some layers, okay? So we're gonna be using a few colors and we'll work quickly. I think we can get this all done to, on this live. And I'll get a Mr. Bottle just uh, in case, but I'm not trying to fill in any of the grooves. I just want the texture to come out, um, come through from the wood box, okay? So Vintage Duck Egg, let's jump in on that. And on this one, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the inside of the box the same way. And all I'm gonna do is just quickly go over it. You sh for the technique that I'm using, I wanna see nails, I wanna see texture, nothing fancy. So this is pretty low tech. Now, I will say that sometimes if you, when you do this kind of technique, when you're putting, uh, well, again, what I would almost call a dry brush, it, it might be helpful to do a light sand between coats if you, if you uh, want it to be smooth for example if you're going to top coat it now this is just going to be a home decor piece for our home we've been featuring dixie bell's vintage duck egg throughout the house or at least colors close to that so this is going to fit really nice maybe next to our fireplace uh, something you could put you know magazines or uh, you could put blankets in it's just a nice uh, simple home decor piece but i love how Dixie Bell's colors work really well on all kinds. I, I can paint a really classy piece of furniture or I can paint a really old wood box. And so you can, again, you can see I'm leaving a lot of wood through, not really p being too picky right now. And, uh, But look at this, we're almost all the way around with this, this first coat, maybe a little too fast. I'm gonna hopefully, um, because I'm not really, I'm not planning on blending, I am just gonna go in with the next color. I will tell you for your kind of project like this, you might need to either use a little bit of, um, if you're moving quickly, you might have to use a blow dryer heat gun. And, uh, but, Already the paint should be dry to the touch. Simply because I'm not putting it on really wet. There is going to be some thick areas of paint, but the way we're painting this tonight, um, it shouldn't be a problem. All right, so now I've got fluff, which is uh, a nice white color. And yeah, I just dipped in there with my vintage duck egg. And I might put just a little bit less I don't want to totally cover up 
all of the vintage duck egg, but this is just a nice way to layer. I'm holding my brush a little bit different just so that I can get it flatter. And you just put it wherever, you put as much or as little as you want. If you want to go all the way edge to edge, that's fine too. The idea here is that the, the paint has worn off or been painted multiple times and the sun just kind of ate it away, if you will. I'm keeping most all my strokes horizontal. I'm not really going up and down, but you could. I just decided not to do that, okay? So, made it all the way around. Two colors. My Lazy Susan's working fantastic for me, right? Let me get a brush that I think will work really well. This one is one I don't use a lot, but this is the round small, and it's not gonna focus anyway. Um, but the round small has a almost what I would call a blunt edge rather than what I would consider. This would be uh, what I would consider a tapered edge where it's a little bit more rounded. So it's flat. And that to me, I, it works really well when you're trying to stencil. There's a lot of ways to apply the paint, but that's what, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I've even airbrushed through these stencils before. What I'm gonna do here is um, and I still have some lightly wet paint, but the stencils can handle that. If I need to, I'll go, up, I'll go back and I'll clean off my stencil. I'm going to line it up to the edge over on the right. And I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on the edge, just enough to have some paint on there. And I'm just going to go kind of in a circular motion. Uh, if you want to dab it, use a brush, use a sponge. I think you need to use whatever your piece at the moment is calling for and best accomplishes what you're trying to do. Like I said, I've even airbrushed through these before and uh, maybe I'll bring that back again sometime. But uh, I've used gilding wax is a really nice for some of Dixie Belle's stencils because they're like the, they're very, some of them are very fancy make sure I didn't miss anything. So let's just take a look. So the idea here, it, the vision or thought I had was, let's go, is to keep it very subtle. So it's not taking over the piece, but it's adding depth and texture. Amy, these, these stencils do not have a sticky, sticky back, which I'm not sure that I would want that, but I could see how it could be Helpful. I'm going to go ahead and lay this down just so that I can, um, I think it's just going to allow me to put it down a little bit easier. I'm using the previous part where I worked on as my guide. Once that's lined up, I can go back to my paint. If you, you know, I've seen a few people using this already. Some like it, are doing a very bold pattern. And on this one, I want it to be subtle. Some other, there's plenty of colors to try. Like I could have done it where I did the fluff in white, or the white, I'm sorry. Use the fluff on the stencil. I just thought it'd be nice to have another, uh, and I'm fading out my work. In other words, I'm not filling a whole square. I'm just kind of fading it out. So in some places you're going to see the stencil more than others and sometimes it'll it'll blend in just because depending on how much white you have so you can see and i'm doing just a little bit here and there just so that it's not taking over the piece because i want it to look worn if i'm if i do this in a solid form i just don't feel like i'm going to continue that look again so let's do that. So I'm going to do on the two sides. So not a lot of paint, just a little light swirl. You could stamp this if you want like that. 
but that's, I don't, for me, for what I'm doing, not really necessary. Um, it's not really giving me enough pain. So again, I'm, I'm not going all the way through the box, just kind of stopping. And we'll do this. I put my link to Dixie Bell's website. I'd love for you to use that to go check out to see if you have a retailer in your area. If you don't, love for you to use the link that I posted in the comment section. Uh, before you leave tonight, go check out um, Dixie Bell's great products. And uh, I'm always excited, always happy when you guys are able to do that. So let's take a look. Very subtle, but present. So some places you're gonna see it more and others you won't see it as much. So again, as much as you want to do is really the key here. Tell you what, lay this down. It's, getting, it's gonna get a little harder for y'all to see. You know what, let's just keep doing so I don't have to move the camera. We'll just do one more side. Now what I will be doing on this piece is I will give it a light sand when I'm done, just enough so it, it's not too rough. And then I'll just, uh, I'll pro you know what? I probably am not even gonna top coat this. This Dixie Bell's paint technically doesn't have to be chalk painted and it's not gonna get a lot of touching. Um, so I'm just not gonna top coat this but if you had to I might give it just a very light sand and then um, apply you for this one I would use a brush to apply top coat you would probably tear up a foam brush or applicator I do have one more step after this by the way we have one color we have not used okay so quick and easy and I'm going to dab this a little bit because I got a little extra more paint than I wanted to. But I like how... And so that's that transfer, uh, I'll clean that up after my live. The next place I need to do it. So here's where I can decide whether or not I want to put it on the sides or not. What do y'all think? Should we go all the way around? I'll tell you what let's do. Let me back you up for the fun of it because we can. All right, so what, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this to both sides. And we won't do it to the other side because it's, um, I wanna keep them, I wanna keep it symmetrical. So I just dipped into some pure ocean. I'm gonna dab off some of the extra because I wanna keep this faint. And we're just gonna put a, a, a just a, what would I call it? Just a mist, uh, I can't think of the word, a dusting of it, how about that? And same technique, I'm not going to push a lot of paint through. And we'll just take a look at this. So just faint, okay? And I'm just gonna do that on the ends. Just enough to keep it there add a little bit of variety to it because we can and so on this one I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of doing the exact bottom right corner on this one let's do the top left just to do it a little different not a lot of paint just a light coat just to demonstrate how you can I'm fading or feathering a little bit of this just so that I'm not I'm not trying to do a complete coverage. There you go. I think that'll work. I like that. It gives me a little bit of variety, but not too predictable, but still analogous, which means it's still in the same color family. The next thing I wanted to do is I've got this lemonade. And it's nice sometimes to have a little bit of 
ray of sunshine, if you will. I'm bring you guys back in a little bit. Dixie Bell has these scrapers and I'm gonna use that just a little bit to add some distressing, if you will. So either you can uh, just touch some areas or we can even scrape it on. By doing this, it kind of confuses, not confuses the wrong word. It just adds a little bit of um, depth and brightness to it. And so I'm just kind of dragging it a little bit. There's so much texture in the wood here that And these are all just faux decoration. I'd call this faux distressing, I guess. So touch, drag, scrape, whatever gives you that look. And again, I'm using lemonade. You could use, uh, if you wanted to continue a yellow, you could use a Rebel Yellow. But lemonade's just, an, I'm finding, it's too bad I didn't try it before, but it's a nice little touch. So th this is a part that you could you could stop before or you can I mean you could even use like pink or something crazy or maybe um, do a little bit more with the pure ocean could work. Sometimes I just like to bring in a nice complement color and yellow is on the opposite. Uh, it's a little analogous meaning same side of the color wheel but it's got a touch of warmth to it, and that's that's what makes the magic work. There's, a, I keep forgetting, there's a little bit of a chisel edge on this, so there are times where not, I'm not scraping anything. Okay. So random, just totally random. Touch a little bit there. Maybe some places you would think that maybe over time And I love the texture on this box. So don't, you can tell that I'm not stressing over any of this because I want to keep it random, have some variety. Totally just cool and fun. The nice thing is, is this is the kind of thing that one, you did yourself too. It looks like, you know, I went out to some cool furniture place or got it off, you know, side of the road and it's been just worn out over time. People pay a lot of money just to go to a store and buy stuff like this and you can do this yourself. So hopefully you get that idea. So we made it all the way around. You could do multiple, like if you want um, a darker color, like a chocolate or coffee bean, but the, you probably don't want to go darker than the wood color. That, I don't know if that would make sense to me to do that, so, um, but that's up to you. You can, you can go crazy with your color palette. And the nice thing is, I'm painting colors that would look good in my, in my home, and you can do the same with your pieces. And you can imagine what all you can do too with Dixie Bell stencils. If you want to go fancy with this or if you want to go, but I think the uh, Buffalo check makes perfect sense on here. At least does it does for me. Uh, not that I'm a home decor expert, but I'm totally putting this in my home. So what do y'all think? Um, hopefully it's something that you would try. Um, David mentioned about the idea of adding a little bit of age to it. And uh, there's, Probably, um, there's a lot of techniques we can use on that. See, I'm just gonna put a little bit of Tobacco Road. Um, this is a color or a technique that I like to use to add some depth and shading. Uh, oftentimes you see me doing it with paint, but the Voodoo Gel Stain is a, you know, basically it's like a glaze. So what I'm gonna do here some of that off. I don't want that much on there. Is I'm just going to have a little bit, see how the brown's on there? 
So this is what I'm gonna to use to, just around the bottom maybe, we'll see. I'm just kind of rubbing. This is how you can, uh, I, I, I like to say that I'm replicating maybe what a wax would do. And remember, I'm not waxing this or top coating it. So if you'd like to add a little bit of aging, this is a simple way to do it. So you can either spray your piece, maybe spray your brush, just get a, just a touch. And, I'm, and you can go, you can go uh, just a little bit in circles. And you'll add just a little bit of darkness. You might want to make sure that your colors underneath are dry because you are doing a decent amount of rubbing. So this is again, what I would consider uh, adding an element, you know, your faux finishing. You know, this is not, it didn't really get aged. So you're faking it, if you will. So you just, you put the, that, uh, the aging where you feel like it needs the most work, okay? Uh, if you want to simulate maybe that the nails um, have kind of rusted, you could take something like the, a rusty nail color and put that on the nail. I'm just giving each nail a little bit of a swirl to kind of age it. Okay, it's, it's actually coming through the camera really well. Uh, hopefully you can see it okay. At least it is on the, my external monitor. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm seeing things right until I go back and watch it, but hopefully that's coming through. So just a little bit of a rub around the corners, just to give it a little bit of, I will tell you that usually I find that tobacco, um, voodoo gel stains dry a little darker so that don't put too much of this type of thing on there. Um, without maybe testing it. See right now, I'm, I, I just put too much on there. I'm gonna wipe off some of that. And you can do that while it's wet. So discharge some of that. Yeah, I just hit that yellow spot. So got a little bit of yellow on there. So I'm pushing the time a little bit here just because of the, trying to squeeze the whole technique into one, one live. So I don't want to go overboard with this technique. I don't want this thing to look super dirty, like I never cleaned my house. I'm just giving it a little bit of a, kind of continuing that faux look. So hopefully uh, you're on board. Tonight again, we did something a little different. We, we weren't painting a dresser or buffet or anything like that, but I thought it'd be nice to do something different with y'all showcase some of the products that we've got going on just a little bit on this last corner I think a little up here I'm currently using the French tip and you can get these awesome products and colors on Dixie Bell's website be sure to use my link to see about a retailer in your area or to order if you don't have one if there are some other products Dixie Bell has like some of their other uh, stencils you can put here like um, you know we should do that you guys got time right I haven't used it yet and I've been trying to figure out what would be a good time to use it? <laughs> what do you guys think about putting the... Um, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna totally do this. This is how we improvise, right? So this is Dixie Bell's silk screen stencils from Farmhouse. I think this would totally work. So on the side or on the back, you can see what they have. They have the... I don't think my camera's focusing quite right tonight, but I've got the farmer's market with the, the chicken. I've got old truck rusty. I don't think I want to do that. And then I've got fresh eggs. Let's do the fresh eggs because I think this could, you could almost say this was it, someone transported eggs in here. What do you think? 
I can't tell if my comments are still working, but I think they are. So throw some, uh, throw some stars or hearts are up there. I think this would be cool. And we could even mix it up at an angle. But I think if this was a real item, probably whoever printed on here would probably do it there. So we're gonna put this right here. This stencil already has some distressing to it where the circle is not quite. And I'm gonna bring you guys down a little bit. So hold on one second. That way you get a better view. All right, so I'm just gonna put that on there. Now I've, Dixie Bell's uh, product comes with, let me just show you. I don't always use it, but it does come with this card that you can use to put paint on. So let's just give it a try, okay? Um, and maybe I might even show the contrast. I usually like to use a brush um, only because oh, I just I just like the uh, being able to hold the brush. I'm a big fan of brushes, I guess. But let's um, let's try to scrape this on here. So this is Dixie Bell's. Um, make sure I get the name right. Farmhouse stencil. And so I'm going to take some fluff, and I'm just going to scrape it in there. And I think the nice thing about the card, you can use a wide end or a short end. And I'm just dipping it into the paint. And I'm using fluff right now. This is a color that's already on the piece, so that keeps it unified. And don't feel like you have to get paint in it. For what I'm doing, since it's kind of like rusty and distressed, you don't feel like you have to get the paint in all the sections because that's kind of the look we're going for anyway. Okay. Y'all hear me scraping that? I should have put this paint in like a, a bowl or something. I'm not getting it. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my brush. This is why I like the brush. I can get right in there. I just think it's a little easier. The scraper is nice and convenient, but it's not always the way I wanna go. What I'm looking for here is I'm looking for any gray area that turns into the color I'm painting because if it's gray, that means you're seeing the stencil. And I don't wanna see stencil, I wanna see the color I'm painting um, so that's your that's your cue is when you see all your paint color you know you've got enough paint in the stencil if you need to when you pull this up if you've got if it's too thick or not what this is a perfect piece where I can go back and sand it when it's dry so here you guys ready fantastic where did you get that container? Oh, I got it from the Fresh Farm Factory. So that actually was, I was not planning on doing that. So you guys really got some authentic, spur of the moment, spontaneous creativity right there. But this is the beauty of having uh, Dixie Bell's products available and at hand is that you can spontaneously erupt. Um, I'm spreading out the stencil right now, making sure it's flat. Yes, I'm using my brush. Okay, so there's a, a bump right here from the wood not being perfect. So that stencil is not gonna be totally flat and we're just gonna run with it, okay? Get my paint back. On this one, I'm going to, because I started with the scraper on the other one, I'm gonna I'm gonna do less paint. I want this one look to, to look more worn out. So the other side's nice and a little bit more perfect, perfectly flawed. 
And this one I want it to look more worn out, so I'm just gonna casually brush it in there. I already know that because there's a bump in here, I'm not gonna get the paint everywhere I want it. But if you wanted to, you could paint it all the way through and then just sand it. But I'm going with a less perfect stencil. So don't judge me when I pull this off and it didn't transfer very well. That's the, I'm showing off different sides of the. Okay, so this one should be very casually rough, not there. That's still pretty cool. All right, keep in mind, if you read the instructions on here, uh, it talks about uh, remove the silk screen and clean promptly after use with soap and water. So I need to do that. Uh, the nice thing is it's the end of our demonstration, so I could promptly go clean that. I'm just going to put it in my, I always usually have a bucket of water here, but I won't do that. So you can go really rough or you can go really filled in. And I think either way, we've done a pretty cool job. And if this is too much, I can sand a lot of that off. So what do y'all think? Remember the beginning? And now it's fantastic. Something a little different. Hopefully that helps you uh, understand some versatility of Dixie Bell's products. Try some different colors. Try some different things like that. I really want you to go check out that link. Go see what they have out there. Uh, whether it's the brushes or a scraper. Uh, the sander, sandpaper I was talking about is their little finishing sanding pad. Uh, those are really nice for just giving it a nice smooth finish. So there's a lot of stuff there that can be of help. I hope this is helpful and fun for you tonight. If you're watching later on, say hi as you pop in. And again, don't forget to follow me on social media and check out my YouTube. Thanks for uh, the chance to hang out with you guys. Have a great weekend. Go out and do something creative. Stay in touch. Take care. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.